You're such an asshole. Greetings all, it is I, the Dark Knight of Advice Columns, the IKEA of Consulting, old Cappy here at assholeconsulting.com, where if you got questions, I got answers. If you have money and you are willing to take the truth, otherwise, there are literally millions of people who are counselors and teachers and therapists and the, the, the boob tube, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear. Pretty lies are cheap and they're given to you for free. If you want the truth, you're going to pay through the nose, and that's a good deal. That's a steal at assholeconsulting.com. Hi, Aaron. I read your book, Curse of the High IQ. It's opened my eyes. To give you a short background, it's not that short. Pour yourself a drink first. I'm 40 years old, divorced twice, and have three daughters. I pay about $700 a month in child support. No alimony. I've practiced the minimalist lifestyle almost my entire life. At first, out of necessity, but now I guess because I'm paranoid that financially things can change quickly, and I'm so used to it that it's tough to waste money. I know exactly what you're talking about, dude. Yep. Like, if I get extra money, it goes right to the house. I don't even, it's like, you know, no, I'm, I'm not, it, it will go away. Anytime something can happen. I currently make over 100000 per year on my own business and only use about 20 hours per week of my own labor. I have a few rental properties that will be paid off in the next four years by just putting 100% of the rents to pay down the principal. I would pay them off sooner, except the tax benefits of keeping the mortgage in the place outweigh the increase of monthly cash flow, depreciation, etc. I have physical gold and silver. I won't disclose how much, but it's significant. Yeah, you don't need that much. Everyone's like, oh my god. It's like people with 600 guns. Like, what do you need 600 guns for? And I'm a huge gun supporter. I just think you can only shoot one of them at a time. And there's only about four or five types that have very specific applications. I mean, so what are you doing with the remaining 595? Uh, after accumulating these assets and my income, I've realized a few things. One, as you mentioned in a few of your books, other people are the most important things in a person's life. And two, almost none of the other people I've ever met think the way I do, nor can they relate to what I think about. After reading Curse of the High IQ, I took an online IQ test, and the result came back as 140. <clears throat> this means that I'm at least two standard deviations away from almost everyone I've ever been friends with, worked with, worked with four as well as my relatives I, I highly doubt that like you would not be friends with them if they were two standard deviations. you just wouldn't be able to tolerate them it, 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 somebody who's two standard deviations smarter than you and two de deviations dumber than you you would not be able to associate with them the two one the, the smarter one you wouldn't even know what they're talking about because they're that brilliant and then the other one is too stupid that it would pain you you'd know what they'd be talking about but they're talking about such mundane, boring, uninteresting things that it actually physically causes your brain and your stomach pain, which has happened. If you don't believe me, just listen to someone talk about the Kardashians or watch a post-post-pre-post-post-pre-game uh, uh, sports ball show. Well, you see, Jim, they got to they gotta score more points to win more games. Oh, fucking thanks, John Madden, you fucking genius. <sighs> but he makes more than I do. Anyway, uh... Most are probably three dev deviations away, if I'm being honest. I've spent so much time being frustrated and thinking, why don't I get this? Why do I have to explain everything three times? And what did I say wrong that offended them? I also realize that I'm more close-minded than most people. Things are very black and white or right and wrong. That's not close-minded. You just have done the research and you know the answer. You're empirical. Uh, the, 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 I don't. I mean, there are some things that are gray, but they're they're quite very few. Human civilization has existed long enough. We've had science long enough that we have answers, black and white answers. We have factual, statistics, objective truths that can be answered. Uh, people like gray area. Well, here, like you say, this seems to make people nuts. They will say things. Not everything is black and white. Uh, well, they say that because most people, most criminals, thieves. Cheaters, scoundrels, charlatans, dishonest people, they operate in the gray. Well, it's not, you know, lawyers, it's a perfect example. Well, it's not cut and dry. Yeah, it is. You fucked that guy's wife. You killed that kid. I don't care if you have a mental disease. No, you're, go you're going away for a long time. Um, so, uh, yeah, they, it is black and white. A lot of people, it's not even that they don't know or they're that stupid. They do know they like to hide. Like, for example, all these millennial kids acting like they have a mental disorder. That's because they get free government goodies and they get attention. You know, oh, I got 42 different genders this week. Okay, yeah. You, 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 don't tell me that's great. No, that's you just being an attention whore. And you know it. So then they're, they're playing dumb. That's, that's, it's, it's intellectual dishonesty is what it is. 
Through trial and error, I've worked out plenty of ways to get enough people to like me, want to spend time in my company, etc., etc. Most of the time, I just listen to what people say and ask very short, open, open-ended questions. This works especially well with the ladies who just love to hear their own vices. Well, then why would you? Okay, why would? Let's reread this again. This sounds so stupid. Through trial and error, I've worked out plenty of ways to get enough people to like me, want to spend time in my company, etc. Sounds like you're working for that. Do you even want these people? And then you talk about how boring this woman is going to talk. Why? You should be happy to spend time by yourself. Not not like, oh, I have to do this because I want people around. Even though it pains me to listen to these people, uh, they're people and they're around. Uh, it, it, it's better to be by yourself insane than listen to people you don't want to hear and you don't like. I mean, this is not a popularity show. You, you should figure that out by the age of 40. Uh, high school is long over. Middle school is long gone. Right? This is not, this is, you get to do what you want. That's why a lot of people read books because they can't find intelligent people to talk to or listen to podcasts or they get in, very involved in hobbies because the, the rest of the world, the normies, they just, it's, it's, it's of no interest to them. But why would you put yourself through the pain and torture of going through normie world when you don't want to listen to these people? But what they have to say doesn't interest me at all. Well, there you go. This is like watching a boring movie. It's like going to church. What the fuck? You know, the, the fucking pastor's talking about Exodus. Gee, I wonder if the Jews will get out of Egypt this time. And I wonder if there's going to be a lesson about having faith in God and letting him lead you through the dark valleys of the woes. I wonder if that's going to be here. I would fuck. Will they bring frankincense and myrrh? Tune in next time to the beginning of the New Testament where Jesus will say, holy crap, there's a lot of sinners here. I should rewrite the Bible. It'd be so much more fun. <laughs> Judas, you traitorous bastard. Oh, where are we? Uh, 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 uh. I start to lose people. Oh, wait. Almost as soon as I start adding anything to the conversations, I start to lose people, especially if they say something like, if I say something like, what you should do is, or why didn't you? Yeah, because you, you go immediate, and I've done this, and I've learned to stop helping people. That's how asshole consulting largely came to an existence. Um, I got sick and tired of trying to help. Not that I was pushing my nose and some people. People would ask, what do you think I should do? I said, well, I think you should do this. Would they ever do it? Would they listen? Would they immediately question my decision, even though I knew I was right? Yes. They, they, they wouldn't execute anything. And they got the same exact problem that they do now. I'm like, you know what? If you're going to piss away my time like that, you're going to fucking pay me for it. Because that's what I did in banking. People pissed away my time. But at least, at least I got paid for it to sit here and just waste away my finite life. So... Yeah, but it's your own damn fault. You're hanging out with people that are not as smart as you, and then you wonder why you're bored with them, and they don't have the intellectual honesty or, or intelligence that you do. Hmm? <clears throat> um, my second wife left me after eight years of being together, married for five. One of the biggest reasons she gave me was I made her feel stupid. Well, you probably did make her feel stupid, and uh, I don't know why she would have agreed to marry you then if, if, you were that, if there was that much of a, a gap. Uh, this was never my intention, and not, it isn't. It's not like you made her, like you intentionally set out to make her feel stupid. And she si sounds pretty stupid. Or she was just lying to you. That's always another one. I got an idea. You know how they tell us it's not you, it's me? I'm going to tell him that you, he makes me feel stupid. It'll be a compliment, but I'll be able to go get away and then go bang the fucking janitor I just met at my office. I truly loved her very much uh, and could understand how I brought out that feeling in her. Uh, after re you gotta do better vetting. I uh, dated for three, and then married for five. Yeah, <clears throat> I I don't. Yeah, I just this is that that scares me right there. A lot of people. Oh, we fell in love and we got married after two months. Uh, ooh, and even after three years, and that's the one. Where it's like you think you know someone after three years, but you know, it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Uh, after reading your book, watching a lot of your YouTube videos, etc., etc., I see that you and some of your closest friends have gone through very similar situations. Yes, they have. And I have too. How do you and your friends deal with these kinds of situations? What do you do to find more intelligent people to bring them into your life? Do you have any advice for meeting more intelligent women? Okay, so there are three questions here. Where did my notes go? Here are my notes. <clears throat> and I took a little bit of notes because, well, one, they require a little bit more thought than just, oh yeah, I don't major in sociology. Um, then I had to think of this myself, like how, how, how does, because this is a problem. 
There are a lot, I mean, even though we're a statistically small percentage of the population, there's still a lot of people out there. 300 million Americans, 7.5 billion people on the planet. There's millions of people uh, that are brilliant. Uh, and because of their statistical rareness, oddity, or uh, uh, statistical outlierness, if that's a word, uh, they have social problems, other problems, which is all detailed in my book, Curse of the High IQ. So, uh, so I want to kind of address it because it will help a lot of people. All right, so the first question, uh, how do you and your friends deal with these kinds of situations and frustrations? All right, one, you're just going to suffer, all right? This is the hand you were dealt. There's no magic wand that's going to make everybody as smart as you or you as dumb as them. Now, you could drink booze and do drugs, and that kind of temporarily gets you there. Um, I mean, mind-altering substances, and that's no secret. People, A lot of smart people use that just to fucking tolerate the, the normies. Uh, but it, honestly, it's just to acknowledge and accept the fact that you're a statistical freak, and there are going to be consequences. Just like if you were born short, you were born with a gland disease, you were born with uh, a predisposition to cancer, you were born blind, uh, you know, you were born tall. It does, a lot of people say, oh, it's, well, being blind and being really smart, one's a disadvantage, one's an advantage. Yeah, it's true. There are, being smart does have more advantages than disadvantages. But for example, being tall, you think, oh, being tall is great. Well, what if you're really tall? You know, you got a duck. Uh, people think you're a freak. People don't want to date you. Uh, male or female, if you get really tall, it's amazing. You see what happens when it, you know, people just drop off. The interest in really tall people drops off. <clears throat> so you're just going to have to accept this is how you were born and stop fighting it. Stop looking for a solution that solves everything. This is We are in the desert. There is no water. Stop looking for fucking water. Okay, we're going to have to, we're going to have, we're going to need it. I know that. And we should look for it, but we got we to gotta stop thinking, oh, hopefully it rains. Hopefully a flood comes in. That's not going to happen. You have to deal with the reality of the situation you're in. Uh, what we do then also is you find good friends and then you keep them. This is really hard because once again, it's not always in your control. I have lost more friends to wives, girlfriends, husbands, children, children. That does I mean, you're going along in the, in the 20s. Off we go into the wild blue yonder. You got a fucking squadron with you. You're having a grand old time and then just, bah, 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 you know, fucking ack ack fire. And then uh, you lose a guy or two. You're like, all right, we're fine. So, uh, uh, Shlomo went off with the girl. He, he, he got the girl. And then he sheepishly comes back. Like, Once you get kids, man, it's like you and maybe one of your other friends left. Uh, and then you got to wait for the people that had illegitimate kids in high school to, for their kids to get old enough. Maybe they come back. Maybe you find some friends at work. Uh, uh, nowadays, you find more and more friends on the internet, but you start picking up stragglers, and uh, it's very transitory. It's very vagabondish. People then they'll fall in love and they'll get married again, or they'll have kids, or they'll find another job, and uh, it's just it is a it's a job to keep your friends. So what you should do is over time, if you could just find one good, really good friend a year and keep them, you're doing way above average. Uh, and then uh, also be willing to go and drive out and visit those friends because most of my, well, I'd say 80% of my best friends are at least 500 miles away. <laughs> Whereas 80% of my regular friends are 10 miles away, but I never see them because I'm tired. I got children. Oh, we can't all be like you. Yeah, you're right. You can't all be like me because you choose not to. That's the sad thing. Is they're brilliant, but then they still get, they still succumb to the the, the regular attrition of normal everyday life so um, value your friends value the good ones um, don't kiss their ass or anything then you're not being yourself but cherish them and and try your best to to be a good friend listen to them uh, engage them be entertaining be an interesting person and um, that's but don't don't just get numbers it sounds like you're going numbers for the sake of numbers um, Use the internet as a substitute to supplement your friends. You can have digital friends online. Some of my best friends, a lot of my best friends I've met online. <clears throat> and then I meet them in neat space. I'll drive out and meet them. It's great. And I have a lot of great friends. Like I said, most of my great friends are out of the state. And um, it's not the same as you have to meet in person. I think humans need that. You absolutely need to meet in person. But even though it's not the same thing, a good substitute 
is having a, a digital friends. And uh, I know Facebook is a waste of time, but if you're attention whoring, yeah, it's a waste of time. But if you have some friends and you like to poke fun at them and they poke fun at you, um, like I got this group of guys in Chicago, uh, we always pick, we give each other shit on the internet. But man, I really look forward to hanging out with these guys. We go to this place called O'Shaughnessy's, and they're all a bunch of schmucks, in case they're listening. Uh, but I really look forward to that. But that's how we all met. And, and then, then maybe you do have a place to go. You have a, a place to call your home from home when you go hang out with those Hanyakers. Uh, then there's things that you, that's your friends. And, and you have to kind of accept, those are dealing with people, you have to accept that environment and the hands you've been dealt the cards you've been dealt as the parameters and the rules. Then there's stuff that you control, all right? And here you're kind of substituting friends out and keeping your mind occupied in other ways. So you get hobbies, all right? Another way to make friends, you know, ballroom dancing, that's social. Uh, any any hobby that there's other people, any sport, um, any, you know, book clubs even. Uh, obviously, book clubs would be a bit more cerebral than your local volleyball or kickball team. For the love of God, don't do what is it all the hip to hip, the people who don't want to be athletes those guys um disc golf that dude want a beer <laughs> okay yeah see that's not going to be terribly high iq but you know the economics forum over at the federal reserve club which doesn't exist but let's say it did oh you might meet some smart people there so <clears throat> so the hobbies that's that's one thing to do other uh, also uh, in, but you're not you're not pursuing the hobbies necessarily to make friends. That's a fringe benefit. It is to keep your mind intellectually stimulated and engaged. For example, I like uh, mechanics. I like working on cars and motorcycles. Uh, and there's, that's usually a one-person operation, uh, but it keeps my mind stimulated. Then there's other intellectual pursuits where, you know, podcasts, reading books, reading history. And what I like about podcasts and books, art, a little bit less than art is that you are look you know the smartest people uh, today hang on I gotta turn that off there we go the smartest people today are great but what is it 50 to 100 billion people have lived in the past two million years of human history uh, so or human existence and then we've had a lot of you know at least thousands of years of history and there's been some very brilliant people who have written and passed on their thoughts and their insights Marcus Aurelius, Aristotle, philosophers, economists uh, and so why limit yourself to the intellects of today when thankfully through literature, podcast, recording, etc. we have the thoughts and intelligent observations of people since forever and so uh, I really enjoy, like I've learned, I, there's a podcast, what's great is there's podcasts on Russian, every country pretty much now has a podcast, the history of that country, is so that I've done Russia, I'm in the middle of Britain, do not do the hit British history podcast with the pussy hipster out in Portland, do the one with the British guy, he gets to the point and he, he doesn't do it, it's not as gay, and the guy's not homosexual, it's just his performance is gay. Um, then I, I'm going to go on to Mexico, I'm going to look at South America, uh, so th there's other intellectual pursuits through history, uh, be it podcasts, recorded, or books that you could go ahead and um, enjoy. Uh, then there's just directly affecting your brain with chemicals, and there's an obvious risk because it's you know drugs are some of them are illegal. You could get addicted. It's not great for your health. Uh, but man, booze is a great fucking drug. It's a great. I, I, I have to back off of it because of health reasons and all that, and I wanted to back off of it, see if I could do it. Uh, but that is a most wonderful drug. Like, you're happy, you're chilled out. You got daughters, you can't do it now. Um, and I wouldn't recommend, recommend drugs. But then there are some drugs that are good. Uh, and even though they're not actual physical substances that you take, you can you still get the dopamine high. So there's like physical exercise Running is a great drug. It releases endorphins. Lifting weights as well. I don't personally like lifting weights. I do it, but I don't like it. Uh, but running, if you become a very good runner or a cyclist or a swimmer, something cardiovascular, uh, that will kind of trick your brain into thinking that you're doing something, or at least it will preoccupy your mind. And then uh, adventuring and traveling. Um, that's when I'm happiest is when I'm out motorcycling around, hunting for fossils or agates or, or rare gems I'm starting to 
become a little bit savvy in that. And it's not even that I find a, a ruby. It's like, oh, here's a ruby. Oh, yeah. it's it's I get to find it. <clears> that <throat> hey, you're you're out there. You're exploring. You're hiking. You're climbing mountains. Again, your brain seeing new stuff. I'm probably if I get the money, I'm gonna do a, a world global trip. I'm gonna take the train from the Iberian Peninsula through Russia down to Singapore and then fly over to the United States and come back in the other way um, just to see something new. Uh, so that constant new novelty is very key to keep your mind engaged, occupied, expanded, but fresh. Uh, and I think once your daughter's out of the house, you won't have that interaction to keep your mind occupied. You'll be like, oh, fuck, what the hell do I do now? So you think it's bad now, wait till your daughters are out of the house, and then you're an empty nester. Holy fuck. Hate to be you. Uh, so you can do directly the booze and the drugs, but with obvious risk. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to deny, deny that, that there isn't benefits to just... People want, they want to get high. They wanna, it's like, no, I like booze because it's just all your problems go away. Well, they don't go away. You just don't think about them. <laughs> and... And you're relaxed. Sometimes you're happy. Uh, and, and you're like, oh, this is what it's like to feel annoyed. You're ignorant. It's what it is. It's liquid, blissful ignorance. Because people don't care about national debts. They don't think about uh, computer hacking. They're just like, dude, the pack scored against the Vikes. Go pack. I'm a cheesehead. You know. So, so is that. All right. Your second question. <clears throat> uh, what do you do to find more intelligent people to bring them into your life? All right. Uh, there's the internet, as I mentioned before. That's how you... You got to cast nets. You got to cast nets, and it's a job. You got to put the effort into it. So you're on the internet. You find people on the internet. The internet's pretty good because it does a lot of self-screening. Like, you know, you're not going to go to the feminist quorum on the internet. You're not going to go to the Facebook page of uh, sociology majors. You're going to go where there's smart people for freedom, you know, uh, genuine intellectuals, uh, people of interest, so that you, so you can kind of screen it out there. So uh, you'll meet some friends that way. Some of them you'll never meet because they're on the internet, even though they're very intelligent people. Uh, but then some of them you'll meet in person, even though your time with them will be uh, uh, flighting and brief. Uh, but you will actually get to meet them. Uh, <clears throat> Meetup groups, if, if you have good ones in your community, I've had limited success with this, but like running groups, um, TED Talks, speeches, economists, philosophy, uh, but what you're going to find a lot of time with meetup groups is like two or three of them meet out of a, a group of 50, and, uh, and then they, they meet once a month. So it's not enough to have an actual genuinely intellectually stimulating social group to have. Uh, the other thing is you go to college, you can go back to college. I, I wouldn't pay for it. I mean, but you can audit a class and audit high level classes. Like, Cause if you're just audit, audit, auditing it, <coughs> meaning you're serving it, you, you, some professors will let you sit in on their class, but you're not actually getting credit. You could sit in and enjoy, you can go to master's, doctorate level classes. You don't have to like take English composition cause we didn't make you take fucking English enough in K through 12. You could take high-end level, you know, smart people classes that are interest of you and might actually be at the cutting envelope, the edge of the envelope of uh, whatever research and studies, the cutting edge of that particular industry or, or discipline. Um, so that's another thing you can do. And then uh, there's what I like to call trial and error. And this I've had success with, where you just try different things you, you don't think you, you'd like, or things you think you'd like, but you're not too sure of. Like, I've gone to different nightclubs, not nightclubs, supper clubs, where the old people hang out. I've gone to cigar lounges, uh, motorcycle clubs, poker uh, games, dance halls, some kind of, it's hobbies, but it's also like, I wonder what's what this bar is like. And you've done this. There's, you could think of it as exploring. <clears throat> you've driven past a million venues you've never gone into because you've had no interest of going in there. Well, Fuck whether you're interested in it or not. Find out if you actually would have an interest in it or not. Like, there's this Russian museum in uh, South Minneapolis I wanted to check out for a while. I never... I've been here 20 years. That thing's been there 20 years. I've never gone in there. One of these days, I'll get around to doing it. Uh, but one of the... Two of the greatest places I ever found was a place called Mancini and the Mancini's and the Manor, both in St. Paul. 
And I would have never gone in unless I forced myself to go in. And then I found like these two crazy lounges. It's all these old people. It's wonderful. They're great places. Unfortunately, the manor is gone, but Mancini's is still around. And if you're ever in the Twin Cities, that is the best place to go. There is no, I mean, the Mall of America. Fuck the Mall of America. Go to, go to Mancini's. That's way better. Uh, but anyway, start trying things you don't think you'd be good at or you don't have an interest in. All right, you got daughters. Go take ballroom dance classes. I mean, that'd be that'd be a no-brainer right there. It, again, it keeps your mind occupied, and then you're gonna find some interesting characters. They may not be up your alley. They may not be as smart as you, but some above might, and, and it'll definitely be different. So the novelty will be there. You have the novelty factor, and and through trial and tribulation, you will inevitably find some good friends. So <clears throat> that's uh, that's how I go and find friends. Uh, do you have any advice for meeting more intelligent women? <laughs> Yes, abandon all hope. It's, just give it up, dude. Because, see, it's, it's like the first thing. Like, you think you, you control the situation. No, you have to acknowledge this is the environment, okay? You are two standard deviations and change to the right of the bell distribution curve. It's going to be very rare for you to find a one. You're, you're in the, the 1%, maybe 2%. I'd have to do the math again and look at the Z-score tables. But you're in the 2%. So one in every 50 women is going to have in your ballpark the IQ that you do. So you're talking 2%, right? It's not just IQ you're looking for, obviously. You'd probably like to have sex, and you'd probably like her not to be your, your third divorce. So there's this whole other set of, of requirements that take an already statistically improbable likelihood and make it even worse, make it even more rare. So she's got to be good looking, you know, and then it's like, okay, are you going to settle for a six and up? You're almost going to have to because uh, the hotter the chicks are, the dumber they are, all right? You see a cute girl. Now, she could actually have an actual IQ of 100, 140, but society is going to spoil that person rotten so much that she's never had to exercise that brain and that muscle, that, that, that mental muscle of hers, that she has an effective IQ of 95, and you're not going to be able to tolerate her. Right, so you're gonna have to find a good-looking girl, who's in the top two percent of intelligence, who's also nice, and is also sane. Well, fucking hell, give it up, just give it up. And what I mean by give, I mean really give it up. I know men and women are programmed to genetically hardwired to program <coughs> to pursue one another and like one another, and it's likely the most important thing in your life because you're hardwired to do that. I don't give a shit what you're hardwired to do. The real world is different. It's mutually exclusive, or not mutually exclusive, but it's not going to happen. It's not feasible in the real world. And you're going to waste your life, like so many very intelligent people do, male or female, uh, chasing after something that just isn't there when you could be pursuing other things in your life uh, and stand just as good a shot as finding that special someone, perhaps even better. So in other words, stop. This goes regardless of IQ, frankly. Stop trying to find people. Okay, I remember I went. I was gonna. I did some writing at the Hewing Hotel, new hotel opened up in Minneapolis downtown. I was doing some writing, actually writing, and I was getting my coffee. And um, I don't know if it was, you know, the singles night, and because it was like dick and pussy night, you know. Every and there's guys like literally, they're in their thirties. These guys like hitting on girls at the bar. I'm like, this is still a thing. This with the internet, you're still doing this. You know, and you see the fat friend who's like texting and all pissed off that her hot friend's talking to the reasonably attractive guy. And he's like, hey, hey I'm swinging McTickcock, hey. And I'm like, this is, this is still going on. All right, all right. I'm, I'm glad I'm out of this racket. Um, <clears throat> oh, where was I going? Um, ban on all hope. Oh, these people are wasting so much time. So much time. And you're going to stand a better shot focusing on doing your own shit Finding a girl or a member of the opposite sex, guy, girl, doesn't matter. Doing you, living you, living the life that you want to be, becoming an actual person, then you are going, hey, I, I, I. and the reason why is simple. Going to a bar, going to a nightclub, purposely going out to try and meet a girl or a guy does nothing to improve you personally. Now, it may build up resilience for men. Uh, men only really get a skill or a trait or, or, or develop a character or strength or resiliency to rejection. So there's a benefit for men to go in there for a little bit just to learn it. Women, you just sit there, oh, buy me free drinks, ask me, I'll pay attention. So it does, but at both male and female, bar that little bit of resistance and courage that men might develop. 
you don't you're not improving yourself as a person if you're going to a nightclub or a bar or you're purposely going out to meet other people to, to attract members of the opposite sex you are improving yourself if you're going to a motorcycling club if you're going to a kayaking club if you're going to read books if you're going to a class if you're going on a hike if you do, you're doing something creating the person that is you that you want to become a very unique individual and <clears throat> Over time, what will happen is the guys and the girls that go to the nightclubs and they party, woo, you know, the woo girls, and hey, man, let's watch the game and drink beers. But by the time they hit 30, their evolution will be no different than them when they were 20. They'll simply be older. But if you are going out and doing whatever, hiking across Zion National Park, um, <coughs> teaching yourself computer programming, going to Taiwan because you want to learn the language, uh, what anything different, taking in podcasts, learning about Russian history, um, doing your own podcast, whatever it is, you doing you, in 10 years time from 20, blank slates both of them, you got the dipshits going out and partying, trying to meet members of the opposite sex and that's all they do, versus you, you become a cultured individual, you become a very interesting man or woman. And all of a sudden, I mean, it's the long game. You're not playing the short game. You're playing the long game. All of a sudden, you become a much better, a much more attractive individual because you're an interesting man. You're the world's most interesting man or woman. Now you can engage people. Now people want to be around you. And you're going to, through these trials and tribulations, hopefully run into some similar and like-minded people, maybe meet an intelligent person along the way of the opposite sex, and maybe that person will fall in love with you and you fall in love with them, and she's not divorcing you in five years. All right? uh, but my point is, both options, both strategies, if you want to call it this, even though you're chasing after somebody, fine, you might get laid more, but you're not you're you're in an environment where the quality is low and you're not going to find a very intelligent or above average person you're not going to find anybody unique nobody special over here so when that's all said and done your chances are still pretty low of finding someone quality of intelligent caliber if that's your goal yeah if you want to get your dick wet go over here but here you stand just as much chances as over here as finding someone but then you have the added benefit of becoming an infinitely better and more interesting person and not pissing your life away and I would argue over here, you stand a better chance of meeting someone interesting because you're running in more interesting circles. Again, it's very statistically unlikely because there's you, you don't do this because I'm going to find a very intelligent woman who likes hiking or when I'm listening to the Russian Rulers History Podcast. No, you listen to the Russian Rulers History Podcast because you want to. You go hiking long distances because you want to. And if someone happens to come along the way, that's very intelligent in it, then that's the fringe benefit. But you're doing this not to waste time because your statistical chances otherwise just doesn't, it doesn't exist to find someone that. So, give up all hope. Live your life how you want. And then, then women might follow. But do not pursue women because that world, it's, you're not gonna stand any chance. I mean, there's no better chances, no better chances. Um, Okay, another thing to help you find quality women. Girls, it's a different thing. If you want to find quality men, I have ideas, but you could pay me. Uh, but how do you find quality women? Uh, one thing I would say is be willing to work with high quality raw material that is not formed into a good quality woman yet. And what I mean by that, fat chicks is a perfect example. Fat chicks, although this may be changing with the millennial generation, are typically nicer because they have to be. All right. If you could get a fat chick, not morbidly obese, but overweight and trim her down, that's infinitely easier than taking a hot chick and making her smart or making her kind or making her nice. All right. Society has already spoiled rotten. The hot chick, you're dealing with, with mental problems and illnesses there that you just don't want to deal with. <clears throat> and the amount of effort and energy you would have to go to get her a hot chick retrain her, game her, say, here's the real world, deprogram her from all the bullshit that's been shoved up her ass about how great she is, to get her to realize, no, you're nothing special, and the real purpose of life is other people, blah, 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 it's not going on party. Dude, by that time, you could take a chick who's like 20, 30 pounds overweight, will her down, you got yourself a hot chick, and a girl that's nice. Of course, there's always the chance that as she gets hot, more guys will hit on her, and then she'll become like that. Eh, hey. I'm just giving you options here. So, 
that is that is something you know take a girl who may have the the intelligent capacity you see these kind of girls they're really pretty but they have low self-esteem and you know and they're dating losers and douches uh but they're intelligent they just never been i don't know educated or showed the way it's like you know what Put on a dress. I'm taking you out to the, sub, the symphony or the opera. What? Just, just shut up. I'm gonna teach you. You're, you're uh, not his girl Friday. Something with the lady. Audrey Hepburn. What was the movie? They take her from this uncultured slob and they turn to her. My fair lady. My fair lady. You find a gal with raw potential, very pretty, just as an uncultured. You know, tatted, well, if she's tatted up, it's almost too late by that time. I don't do girls with tattoos. But you find a gal that's running with the, the hipster dipshit millennial generation, and you say, yeah, okay, when you're done uh, drinking draft beers at micro brews and playing um, disc golf, uh, I'd like, let's go. Come on, we're going salsa dance. I'm taking you out here. Put on a dress. No, put on a dress. Yeah, da da da. Let's go. So if you're willing to work with some quality raw material, you could kind of form a gal. But you don't want to control them either because that you, you just kind of want to show them the way, give them a taste, and hopefully they take it on their own. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to become controlling. But it's, it's, it's an option. If something doesn't exist on the market that you want, go and make it yourself and see what raw materials and the, go, what's available at the grocery store. Okay, pizza isn't available. Can I make a pizza with the grocery store? All right, so we're going to grab these raw materials and we're going to make them. Um, also control your environment kind of related to the first part about the bars there, there's no don't hang out where stupid or average people hang out just don't if you want to find intelligent women you got to go where intelligent women are um, the problem is intelligent also usually means the university where they're indoctrinated so as IQ goes up girls and education goes up their leftist politics go up and this is for guys too um, but that's only because they're indoctrinated. They, from the age of eight, they've been made to think they're wonderful. And until our generation, you and I are the same age, <clears throat> they think that education means they're smart when they don't know anything. They have no facts. They have no data. They have no uh, uh, critical thinking. They're not intellectually honest. Um, so you have very intelligent people, but then you get more and more into leftist politics. And sadly, that becomes their new religion. It's just all about, oh, I'm donating this. I'm virtue signaling. I belong to this nonprofit. I go green. I go organic. Look how intelligent I am. It's actually a tragic, sad way. It's like, dude, you could have become like a fucking engineer or a doctor or, or, or a fighter pilot. You could have become all these things and you just became a fucking professor. Oh, how fucking unique and interesting. Let me guess. You're going to tell me it's the patriarchy's fault. You're going to tell me we need to spend more government money. And then it's like, then it's like, yeah, you got the raw intelligence, but you're effectively stupid. There's there's nothing interesting there. It's, they're very common. That's the sad. They're just... I mean, what is more common than a highly educated leftist woman? I mean, they're, they're, they're a dime a gross. It, it's... Yeah, okay. I mean, and even... <clears throat> take politics out of it. I would just like the novelty. Just the rareness. I mean, girls who are conservative or Republican chicks... They're just more interesting, just because they're different. It's not even that you necessarily agree with their politics. It's like, wow, that's interesting. That's different. You shoot guns? Interesting. I'd like to hear what you have to say, because it's going to be different than what I've heard a million times over the past five decades. So your environment, okay, you know, you're going to cigar lounges, higher intelligent men there, predominantly a male environment, but every once in a while women come in, they're pretty intelligent. Go to the gun range, and if there's a girl with guns, you know, again, a statistical oddity, pretty interesting. Uh, go to speeches, seminars, sure. Um, again, like with leftist women, they, they have the raw intelligence, and you can maybe repurpose them. A lot of guys will switch them. They'll figure it out. You see this somewhat commonly. A girl will really like you for biological reasons. She's sexually attracted to you, um, and she'll throw her politics out the window. And the guy's like, no, you're going to go home. You can literally go up to some fan. I've seen it happen. Like, yeah, that's cute. You have you. Oh, that's nice, sweetheart. You pat him on that. And then you just immediately, they go, what? And then they're already being turned on because no guy ever stood up to him and pat him. Oh, that's nice, sugar tits. And, <laughs> and they just, oh, and they hate you right off the bat. But then he stood up to me. My God, I'm going to show him. I'm going to get hot. I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to get huge tits. I'm going to fuck him silly. I'm going to rock his world in bed. I'll become the best damn stay-at-home wife he ever had. I'll show him. But it's not exactly like that. But... Guys will say, no, no, you're not. And because they're a challenge, then they, then they got to prove you're wrong. And all of a sudden, these women find out 
that they're wrong and then they are like they wake up they're like holy shit i was brainwashed and then they become the most ardent wonderful stay-at-home traditional wives ever so maybe you could you could pluck one from the academia matrix um but once again your environment would be a, a higher intelligence higher caliber um but you know Hey man, Guns N' Roses is coming to town. Oh, is that really not? Oh, that's great. You know, because with this technology for a fraction of the fucking time and cost, I hear them a lot better than the fucking auditorium with all you fucking people drinking and throwing up, reliving like it's 1987. Welcome to the jungle! Dude, you're great. Ah, shut the fuck up. All right. Uh, and then the final thing to meet women, intelligent women. Uh... Admit you're going to have to give up on something, okay? It's already very unlikely you're going to find someone at your intelligence who's pretty and nice and sane. And it's sad. Smart, pretty, nice, sane. At that level, 140 IQ, you know, plus or minus half a uh, standard deviation, you give yourself a little bit of room. You're going to waste your life. You're going to waste your time trying to find something that doesn't exist. Or maybe it does exist. You just, there's no way you're going to be able to sift through the 3.25 billion women on the planet to find her. It just, and you're going to waste your life in the meantime. <clears throat> so stop trying to find perfect and settle for what's good enough. All right. Um, I, and this is something that I learned. Like I wanted this smoking hot, you know, super intelligent and uh, could keep up with me hiking it. No, doesn't exist. That girl just does not exist. Uh, but you know what? I got myself a damn fine girlfriend that loves me to death, takes care of me, has her shit together, and is, an, very, is a very interesting person. You know, and that's, that's good. And, and once you start finding, oh, this is the best girl I dated, even if it's not what you want, like you're like, God dang it, like there's just this one thing. There's always going to be the one thing with the girl. And that, that goes, there's always a catch with women. She's got bad breath. She farts. She snores. Women fart and snore and burp too. They do. Uh, she, I'm trying to think. Things that, that they're like, there's always a catch, but it's not a life-ending thing. She's a little too tall. She's a little too short. She's a little too fat. She's a little too skinny. After a while, you know, the biggest problem I had is they're not that small too one they all want to fucking have kids that was a deal breaker for me there was one gal who was very nice I liked her very much but she wanted to have kids so that wouldn't work out there was another one very nice very smart one to have kids and then there was a third one very nice loving but god she was just not smart enough and that was like on the verge where it's like could you just Ugh. and after a while Soon you're 35, you're like, you know, wait, I've been hardcore dating a long time. Like, I've been trying. And then you realize statistically, that's the real world. It's not bad luck. You better start settling for something. And that's what it is. You got to sell. The, the produce in the market, that's as good as it's going to get. Pick the best cantaloupe. May not be what you wanted. Oh, may not be, may not make you terribly 100% perfectly happy. Your happiness is not achievable in this grocery store, in this market with these cantaloupe. This is the happiest cantaloupe you will get. I'm terribly sorry there's a little bit of mold and the rind isn't perfectly spherical as you would like, but this is the best one. There you go. Welcome to being a super intelligent person, male or female. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's it. It's a lowering of expectations. It's a refocusing on yourself. It's repurposing your life, not to have the opposite sex at the center of it, which is sad, but statistically in an odd way makes it more likely you're going to find somebody um but yeah man i mean and you see this you see this a lot with uh, hypergamy if you don't know what that term is look it up <coughs> where in kind of a similar way women always want to trade up because they can always find better but they never never settle for good enough you know she's got the she's got the senior analyst well then there's the investment banker and she leaves the and then she goes away oh but then there's the surgeon and you go but then there's the astronaut and then there's the surgeon astronaut but then there's the surgeon astronaut investment banker shark hunter and then uh, all of a sudden she's 60 years old and nobody wants to and then the investment banker shark hunter surgeon astronaut who married her when she was 28 and at her peak he drunk, drops her for another hot piece of ass because he's rich Anyway, I hope that helps out. Hope it helps out a lot of you. If oh, let me show you guys. Hang on, I'll go get the book. Uh, 
If this helped any of you, or you might help, the, 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 uh, I wrote the book, Curse of the High IQ. Um, you can find that online, uh, paperback, Kindle, and audio book. Um, and then I have other books. You can find that at Amazon.com. Just search Aaron Cleary. Visit my uh, blog, Captain Capitalism at blogspot.com. What the fuck else do I do? Oh, I got a podcast, the Clary Podcast, C-L-A-R-E-Y. Uh, and that's about it. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I, I, I cannot give you solutions, but I can give you sanity. All right, best of luck to all of you. Toodles.